Hello fellow traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with your weekend update for the trading week ending 9.09. So what comes after Greece? The simpler answer is disaster. It seems inevitable that Greece is going to default and who can blame them? The Germans didn't want to put any more money into this disaster and now they're circling the wagons to protect their own, their own banks that is. If the politicians knew anything about trading, they would have cut their losses a long time ago on this puppy. We ran about this in the past and that is Greece cannot be considered in the same league as the powerhouse countries like Germany and France. Both of those countries actually have economies that work and they produce products. Greece on the other hand is all about the Acropolis and other Greek wonders from the past. There is nothing in the future for this country except a default and start all over again. Sooner or later the truth will come out and the politicians will have to face the music as they will no longer be able to kick the can down the road. So let's go take a look at the weekly charts and see how we can preserve and protect and grow your wealth in 2011 with our trade triangle technology. Let's start off with our portfolio manager. And this is my home page, obviously you've seen that. And we're going to the portfolio manager. And the first market we're going to be looking at is the S&P 500, which was actually down on the week. For the week, the S&P 500, we have a weekly chart on the screen now. You can see that our monthly trade triangles are negative, the weekly are positive, and the daily are positive. So again, this is a little bit tricky. I think we're going to see this market. This is the second lowest close we've seen in the S&P uh, 500 on a weekly basis. And I think we'll see this market come down more and test the lower levels here around 1100 or 1100. Uh, maybe the case, but generally speaking, this is a bearish pattern. We've showed you on the daily charts all last week. We thought this was a flag formation, indicating another big push down. We've already put in a very, very large top, which is right here, and it's going to see this market go lower. So, with our trade triangles, our monthly trade triangles negative, we have to say this: this market is probably more than likely going to trend lower. The one thing to be note uh, cautious of is the minus 60 that's a trading range signal basically it's mixed but we are still not if we go down here further we're just now getting into an oversold condition again we could stay in this position for quite some time just like we stayed overbought for quite some time we could stay oversold for quite some time again you've got your MACD in a negative mode and it still augurs for lower prices in this market. A lot's going to happen with uh, this coming trading week with uh, Greece, uh, the contagion word, uh, we've talked about that before, and also what the banks are going to look at. The bank stocks look really, really bad, and they look like they can go lower. Let's go to our next market, which is going to be silver. Actually, silver closed down over 4% for the week, did not close well. This is, we consider this uh, to be a negative engulfing line, and if we close lower this week, then I think we have a good chance of seeing this market come under a little more profit taking. But generally speaking, the trend is up. The weekly and the monthly are positive. You can see them right here, indicating um, still higher levels ahead for this market. The one thing to look at, we're plus 55, meaning we're in a, like a trading range type market, and we may stay there for a while. But if you also look, I'm going to put my illustrator on here, and that is we've been going really for the most part sideways in this market. You can see sort of if you could look This is kind of like a really big, what we uh, call an energy field. And we may uh, still have to build it further, but uh, it would seem that we're still in this mode. Again, we want to be very, very careful with some of these levels we're looking at. I would say right around the $38 uh, dollar an ounce level on silver would be a very key level to look at. This must be considered uh, resistance right now, right across here this level, uh, which is right around the 44 area, that's uh, $44 an ounce. I think that's definitely an area that's going to present, it has presented problems for the last four weeks in silver. So let's see how this coming week looks, but we were down for the week. Uh, let's see how we open up on Monday and again how we trade for the rest of the week. So let's go to our next market, which is, let me clear everything off the screen right now. and. The next market is going to be what everyone likes to talk about is gold. And uh, that gold market actually was also negative for the week, down 1.44%. A little bit of a dark cloud cover 
a little bit. Uh, and this is not a particularly exciting area for gold now, unless it starts to pick up pretty quickly. But however, both of our trade triangles, the monthly and the weekly, remain positive, uh, which is indicating a strong upward trend. If we go down here, you can see the gold has been overbought for quite some time. Not an unusual event when you have a very strong trend, just like if you have a strong trend in the equity markets and it's going down, they could stay oversold for quite some time. But generally speaking, the MACD is positive. All of the longer term indicators are positive. Near term, a little bit of softness. Certainly, I think uh, we want to be careful of the 17, I mean, 1700 level is a big level. That's where the stop and reserve, the parabolic is right here around 1702 it comes in this week. So uh, that's the big level. As long as we maintain ourselves over that level, I think we're still okay to see this market go higher. But that's a definitely a key. And the other two key levels are going to be these two lows. I was right, right around the 1750 area. That should hold the market in the short term. That's $100 from now. There's no way to trade this market with a you know $10 stop anymore. It's just really volatile and you have to be willing to sit through some pretty dramatic moves on the upside and on the downside. So let's go to the next market because there's actually some interesting markets. One I want to tell you about in particular in just a few minutes. The next market we're looking at is crude oil. Crude oil for the week is plus 0.63 percent, barely. But look at the battle between the bulls and the bears here. This is really kind of like a, a neutral zone. It's like very similar to here. And with, when you get these tight, tight levels like this, it usually means something is going on, uh, possibly a change, just like we saw here. Uh, I think that the trend in crude oil based on our monthly trade triangles is negative. And you can see if you just, just on a visual basis, you can see, and let me just illustrate that to, for you with the Telestrator. And visually, you can see how this market's been trading. It basically has a move down, so it goes sideways has another move down, maybe go a little bit like that, has another move down, goes like that. So I think basically we're still stepping down in this market. I don't think we reversed to go higher. Certainly the $90 a barrel is huge resistance right now for this market. We're looking at the October contract, um, but $90 a barrel is a huge resistance. I would say right around the 82 level is going to be pretty good support. Uh, but there again, um, this the trend monthly is negative. And we do have a mixed bag, so it's plus 60, which means, oops, which means you've got a trading range right here, indicating you could see more choppy action in this market. But our bias right now still has to go on the side of the monthly trade triangles, which is negative. So let's clear this off the screen, go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is really the one we think has a lot of potential. This is the dollar index. Now, remember we talked about this, we've been talking about this for quite some time, about how boring it was, and, but how you should pay attention to it, because usually boring markets turn out to be really exciting markets. Now, here's what we were looking at for the longest time. We said that the 7350 area, which is right around here, was strong support. So this is strong. support. Okay? And we are looking at this market to, uh, let me just clear that off the screen for a second. And we're also looking at this level right here, which we identified for you as 7610. If we had a close over there, it's very, very bullish. This market has completed what we consider to be an energy field. And we can see this market going quite a bit higher. Um, quite a bit higher meaning we can see certainly maybe up to the, certainly the 80 level is very much in the cards, but possibly 82 and getting up to these levels that we saw back here. So 81, 82, I would say there's a target zone, interim target zone, but any pullback in this market is going to be met with very, very, very good support. So let me just take everything off the screen and go to our next market. I want to show you how this looks. Actually, this is we're looking at the dollar index, which we talked about before. It's a compilation of a number of currencies in a basket. Uh, it's measured. But I want to look at one currency uh, particularly, and that's the euro dollar against the Swiss franc. You can see this is what I'm talking about. It's the same pattern except reversed, meaning the euro is going down against the dollar. For example, uh, when you have a situation in a symbol in currencies, when you have the euro, the lead currency like that, that really dictates which way 
you look at the market. So if the year, if this market is going up like this, it means the euro is going up and the dollar is going down. When it's going down like this, it means the dollar is going up and the euro is going down. Does that make sense? Plus we have our trade triangles all are negative right now. And we're currently trading at 138.65. That's where we sort of closed in New York on Friday. Uh, we'll be opening up pretty soon in the Far East, so we'll see how this goes. But this market does not look good to us, and it looks like it can come down quite a bit from current levels. The, obviously, there's some key levels to look at. The 135 will be a pretty big area, but also if I just go across like this, the 130 level is definitely going to be a big, big, this is going to be a big, big level, the 130 levels. So let's watch it. Trend is your friend. The trend is down in the euro. We expect it to go lower. So let me clear everything off the screen. And go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at is actually some a way you can actually trade this market with an ETF. Oh, uh, that's not the one I want to look at. Let me just go back to my portfolio. This is the one I want to show you. Uh, is This is an ETF. And it's an ultra short. It's a P Pacific EUO Pro Shares Ultra Short Euro. This market, just look at the pattern. Again, you have this wonderful sort of energy field. Um, now, this is leverage, so you have to remember it's two times leverage, so it means for every time the market goes uh, down, it, this will go up twice the size. I think it was up about 7% last week. But again, you have this wonderful energy field. You've heard us talk about these energy fields. You just draw a line across the top there. You've clearly broken out to the upside. And this market could go, it's going to follow the euro, obviously, because that's what it tracks. But you could certainly see this market go out to 22, which is about $4 from here. Uh, but it's a nice return on capital. Uh, it could considerably go considerably higher. Uh, but let me just take this off and go down. And you can see this market is just beginning to, from an, oh, really, a, it's just beginning its move. So there's, there's a lot of potential here. So pay close attention to it. Any kind of pullback in this stock, uh, uh, this euro, this ETF, uh, definitely want to look to be a buyer. So let's go to our next market. And that's going to be the one we looked at just before, two seconds ago. And that's the CRB index, which we always look at. And again, this market closed down 1.1% for the week. Uh, again, a mixed bag plus 50. It's a trading range. And again, it's not quite certain which way this market's going to go. My gut feeling is we're going to do some more waffling in this market than eventually go higher. But uh, that's what we, th we think. Inflation is going to kick into the market eventually, but maybe it's going to take a little while longer before that is seen by the market. Sometimes the fundamentals are uh, they're there, but the market doesn't recognize it and doesn't want to be seen as jumping ahead of the fundamentals. So timing is everything, and that's where the trade triangles can help you. And just on a personal note, I just want to say, we always, obviously, our thoughts and prayers go to the, the victims of 9-11, um, and it's a 10-year anniversary today. It's a very sort of a redemption day for America. I hope everyone's doing well, and uh, certainly we are thinking of those families this weekend. So anyway, everyone have a great weekend. What's left of it? We'll be here Monday at 1 o'clock with the 1 o'clock update, uh, midday update. So please stay tuned and watch those markets tonight. And if you're not a Market Club member today, join. You'll get a lot of benefits from this program. Hey, this is Adam Hewison. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday, 1 o'clock.